you can trace the origin of SpaceX back to a conversation I had with a friend of mine, uh, Adeo Ressi, who was actually my college housemate uh, at Penn. Uh, and we're on the Long Island Expressway and, and we're talking about, he asked me what, what I'm going to do after PayPal. And I thought, well, you know, I, I always, always liked space, but I don't think there's anything I could do as an individual in space because it's a province of governments and billions of dollars and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I, know now, I, I know that the, the, the original plan was to go to Mars after the moon. So, uh, you know, I thought I'd just go to the NASA website and find out when that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when the NASA website, there was no mention of Mars. Um, I was like, well, it's, like, it's got to be here somewhere. It's not, yeah. It was, was nowhere to be found. In fact, Mars had got, manned mission to Mars had been banned from, from NASA. <laughs> I was shocked to learn. Um, so uh, I thought, well, uh, may, maybe there's some uh, philanthropic mission, you know, some sort of something that would catch the public interest that would uh, result in the public wanting us to go to Mars, you know, rekindling public interest in, in manned missions to Mars. And that's where I conducted a sort of feasibility study, pricing and technolog technological feasibility of, of doing um, a small uh, mission to Mars, looked at a few possibilities, uh, eventually looked, I thought, well, the, the, the most feasible and affordable one would be to deliver a small greenhouse to the surface of Mars, like about a meter in diameter, with seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel. It would hydrate upon landing and grow the plants. And then you'd have this, uh, I think you'd get quite a lot of public interest from that because the public likes, the pro public likes precedence and superlatives. So this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled, the first life on Mars, um, first life on any other planet that we're aware of. Um, and you'd have this great money shot of green pl plants on a red background. So um, that, that seemed like it would generate a lot of interest. So I, I um, hired a bunch of consultants of various, various types to help me figure out how to do this. And we're able to get the cost of the, uh, the, the non-launch portion cost down to a pretty low number, you know, sort of seven or eight million dollars. Now, this is like really using commercial components, taking a lot of risks and, and all that. But maybe seven or eight million dollars per per spacecraft. I thought we needed to do two because what if one blew up? That would really suck. Um, so, so if we could get down, get the non-launch portions of, of, of the thing down to maybe seven or eight million dollars. And it's like, so then I started looking for the cost of, of the rocket. Um, domestically, it was completely infeasible because a Delta II, which is the smallest rocket that could possibly do the mission, was like $65 million. Huh. So that was a lot of philanthropy, too much for me. Um, and, and particularly if you want to do two missions, like hell, it's like $130 million. So I uh, went to Russia a couple times, three times, to look at buying a refurbished ICBM, you know, from the, the Dnepr, basically. Um, and, but the pricing that they wanted for the thing was, was also still, still too high. Um, and the third, after the third time I visited them, I sort of, you know, along the way, sort of reading about rockets and saying more about what it took to develop one. And after the third trip back, I said, well, I'd like to look at, you know, it, well, what I came to realize is that the real fundamental barrier was the cost of transportation. If you could get the cost of transportation low, then, then we would be doing a lot more in space. Um, and, and so I said, well, essentially like it, the, the sort of problem transitioned in my mind from there being this idea that, oh, if there's a will, there's a way, to being actually my... It, it to being the opposite, opposite that I actually, it seems to me that there was plenty of will for, for space exploration. But if people thought there was no way it could be accomplished, they're not going to bang their head on a wall for no reason. Um, so it's really, if there's a way, there's plenty of will, uh, it seemed to me. So the question was really about making a way. So, so flip from building will to building way. <laughs> um, so that's, so I looked at, um, you know, what it would take to build a rocket in the U.S. and whether it's possible to make substantial cost improvements. Um, and had a series of meetings uh, with key engineers from the space uh, uh, world and uh, said, okay, I think I don't see any fundamental barrier to reducing the cost beyond uh, substantially below what, what is currently the case. And so started SpaceX. As far as like a uh, How do you think um, just like having so much funding backing yourself um, and starting SpaceX with that 
can you talk about like um, how that's been advantageous, maybe not having like a board of directors to answer to all the time when certain things go wrong um, with SpaceX? Yeah, it's certainly helpful. Uh, well, first of all, I don't think, I mean, since I was a successful entrepreneur before SpaceX, I could have raised money. Uh, I mean, I could raise money for a bloody cheese factory if I wanted. You know, they'd be like, okay, you know. I've never done a cheese factory before, but it knows how to build businesses. So, uh, and I, c I could have raised money, but it would have been quite difficult, nonetheless, because rockets are so far outside the comfort zone of venture capitalists. You know, it's just, they're just, <laughs> I mean, there's, it, it sounds crazy to them. So, um, I would have had to divert a lot of personal effort towards raising money. And if we did have board of directors uh, that I had to answer to, it would also be a big distraction, take up a lot of time. Um, not impossible, but certainly take up a lot of time. So it, yeah, certainly advantageous to fund it personally. You know, I, I'm actually the chief designer of the rocket, which it sounds wacky, but uh, uh, it's, and uh, I kind of fell into that by, by accident because I couldn't find anyone. Um, so, but, but I did have, I was able to bring on early on a, a very good uh, guy to head up propulsion, a good structures guy, a good avionics guy. So as far as the subsystems were concerned, I had you know, very experienced, competent people. Um, try to hire someone to be the chief designer. Um, was unsuccessful in doing so. Uh, and um, so I ended up having to do that role myself. The uh, question was, how was I able to convince um, leading rocket engineers to leave big companies and a comfortable job to join SpaceX? Um, well, um, I, I should ask them how I was able to convince them, because uh, I'm not, I, but the, so this is totally speculative and maybe different answer for different people. But um, the fact that I've been successful with two, or two companies beforehand, I think was very helpful. If I'd just been some random dude who said, let's start a rocket company, they would, I wouldn't have got very far. Um, but ha you know, having started one company right out of college, sold it for 300 million, started another company right after that, sold it for a billion and a half, that's a nice trajectory. You know? So uh, that, that, that seems, that, that says, okay, the dude must have some business acumen. Um, and, uh, I'm a very technical guy, so I mean, you know, they were able to talk details of technology, and they knew that, you know, I wouldn't make them do something stupid. Um, so I think that was helpful, um, and um, and they were also, I think, somewhat frustrated in their jobs uh, at the big companies because they'd spend so much time working on some program and years and years and. Maybe it'd see flight, maybe it wouldn't. You know, it's very frustrating. Um, and you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't that I could recruit anyone from any company. Um, as I said, I wasn't able to recruit a, some, a, you know, somebody to be the overall chief designer of the vehicle. Um, I tried. Um, you know, I tried to recruit. Well, first of all, I can only recruit from the bloody US. So, um, and there's only a few rockets that have been designed in recent memory. So there's like, there's like five people you could try to recruit. I tried to recruit all five, and I couldn't get them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like I had a perfect batting average in recruiting people. Far from it. Um, you know, I think we're getting to the stage six years on, where now we're profitable. You know, revenue last year was over 100 million, um, where we are able to recruit people for, because they can now say, OK, this thing is probably going to survive you know, and, and do well. Um, so we're, our ability to recruit uh, people from the big companies has increased dramatically. Um, but uh, it certainly was very difficult in the beginning. <laughs>